What's up, guys? Uh, w and Rex here back with another video today. We reacting to uh, the continuation of early Muslim expansion, guys. If you're new to the channel and want to help us out and get the 300 subscribers, guys, please hit that subscribe button, guys. Almost to 300. Hit that like button. Yeah, hit that <laughs> like button, guys. Please uh, let us know that you liking the videos and enjoying what we coming out with. And it, yeah, so also comment below what the videos you want us to react to. It can be a uh, Warhammer, you know, we come out with some more Warhammer history, 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 any videos, guys. Just let us know any video. We react to anything, guys. So, without further ado, let's continue on with the video. Bloodshed and forced their generals to reach an accord. Okay, this one they were just one of you know, the last killing. members one of the House of Sassan, the eight year old grandson of Khosrow II, was crowned as Yazdegerd III. Although the civil war was now over, the Sassanid realm was extremely vulnerable, as the Parthian clique basically controlled the northeastern portion of the empire, while Turkic raiders attacked from the Caucasus and Central Asia. At the same time, the first caliph Abu Bakr sent a portion of his army under Usaba ibn Zayd to raid the Ghassanids in June of 632, possibly checking if the Byzantine frontier was well hmm. defended. The death of Muhammad and the departure of his army made a big number of newly conquered Arab territories yep, think that the caliphate power. was fragile, and in July, all of the peninsula save for Hejaz rebelled against Abu Bakr in what was called the Ridda War, or the War of Apostasy, as many rebel groups were led by people who declared themselves prophets. Yep. Like I just said. The situation was most dire around Medina, as the rebels threatened the second most important city of the new realm in late July. However, Abu Bakr swiftly marched to the area and defeated the rebels in early August. That gave enough time for the army, which was sent north and defeated a small Ghassanid army around Mutah, to return. Abu Bakr proved to be a talented commander. Instead of uniting his armies and marching on each of the rebel groups separately, which would have allowed the rebels to attack his rear with impunity, he divided his army into smaller groups, and these units attacked the enemies around the peninsula. This strategy works to perfection, and by March of 633, the Caliph's rule over the entire region was hmm. restored. It is difficult to assess how much the Caliphate lost in terms of manpower, but the sources Dude, underline that the lot, generals though. and troops gained invaluable experience in this conflict. While the Ridda Wars were going on, the leader of the Arab Bani Bakr tribe, Muthana bin Haritha, was raiding the Sassanid territories in southern Iraq. The Sassanid civil wars made this frontier subject to attacks, mm -hmm. and Muthana, who adopted Islam sometime in the 630s, informed Abu Bakr of this fact in early 633. The Caliph decided that it was a good time to take over Iraq, and one of his main generals during the Ridda Wars, Khalid ibn al-Walid, was ordered to invade the region. Khalid was able to recruit an army of 18,000 yeah, at his base know, at Yamama yep. and left for Iraq in late March 633. A letter was sent to the Sassanid governor of Dast Maisan, Hormozd, demanding his surrender. Mm. Hormozd obviously didn't, but right. sent a letter to the capital asking Shah Yazdegerd III for reinforcements. This letter was probably a trick by Khalid, as Hormoz gathered his 20,000 and marched out of the capital of his governorship, uh, Mubala, to defend the crucial road from Yamama near Kazima. Khalid, however, moved his troops through the desert and threatened Hufir. The Sassanid leader was informed of this and had to march towards Hufir via Ubala, According to the Muslim sources, that was exactly what Khalid was hoping would happen. On his turn. Despite the civil wars, Sassanid armies were still stronger, as their armor and weaponry made them superior, and the only tangible advantage the Caliph's forces had was their mobility. Khalid was going to use this mobility to tire the Sassanid army. This would become one of the most important elements of the early Muslim expansion. Wow, that's a lot their of mobility people, man. and aggression were forcing their foe to defend multiple cities and fortresses, as it was never clear where the Arabs would strike. By the time Hormozd reached Hufair, Khalid started marching to Kazima. 
He could have probably taken the city with ease, but didn't want to be besieged by the heavily armoured Sassanids, so his troops waited and rested to the south of Kazimar, while Hormozd marched towards him. In the first days of April, the tired Sassanid forces approached. <laughs> yeah, they just got them marching. The engagement that would occur in the area is traditionally known as the Battle of the Chains, due to the Battle description of the, of the Sassanid the forces in the Muslim sources. According to them, the Sassanid infantrymen were chained to each other to create a cohesive line, what? or to prevent any retreat. However, That's this crazy. makes no sense tactically, as that would have made the infantry even Your less mobile, arrive. and each dead warrior would have burdened their companions. Yeah, because they down and they can they can't move at the all. They can numerous battles fought between the Romans and the Sassanids. Most probably, this stems from an incorrect reading of the Persian word silsila, which can be translated as a mountain chain, a bounding chain, or a single line of soldiers. So the word chain might be a metaphor for the disciplined Sassanid oh, okay. infantry. In any case, Khalid wasn't Hopefully going to allow Hormozd's right. troops to rest, and his preparations forced the Sassanids to form up directly to the west of Kazma at the end of the enough. tiring march. Their formation was the traditional infantry centre and cavalry wings. Meanwhile, Khalid's army was arranged in a similar manner, but for the time being stayed in the desert behind the hills dividing the two armies. This delay only added to the fatigue among the Sassanids, as they Keep had to stay in so formation in their full panoply under the sun. However, this waiting couldn't continue for long, as the Sassanids controlled the springs in the area. So a few hours later, Khalid emerged on the hills and his troops stopped some distance away from those of Hormozd. The only surviving primary sources of this engagement belong to the Muslim historians, so we will present wow. their view of this battle. As was customary for the region, and traditional for the Roman, Sassanid and Arab battles of the era, the battle started with a duel, as Hormozd moved forward and called Khalid to fight him one on one. Oh, Apparently Hormozd then dismounted and Khalid followed suit. As the two generals clashed and fought to a standstill, a few Sassanid skilled warriors attacked Khalid. Wow, come on. Another Arab general, Kaka bin Amr, who will play a larger role in the future, saw this and also decided to join the fray, attacking Khalid's assailants. Kaka and Khalid were able to overcome the Sassanid fighters and killed Hormozd. Mm. That was two generals gone. The Arab well, general was one leader to their lines, gone. And Khalid and ordered his troops assassins. forward. They were generals. The armies engaged each other. On the yeah, wings, the balance of forces didn't allow either side to gain the upper hand. While in the center, the Muslim Cavalry infantry charged their counterparts a few times, clashing and falling back without dealing much damage. However, the Muslim troops were much more rested, as even the infantrymen had traveled to the battle mounted. The Sassanid footmen weren't able to rest after their march, and each charge tired them even more. During it, it one of the charges, up. Khalid's center managed to crack the disciplined Sassanid line in a few places. There was already a disadvantage. The Sassanid army, which was left leaderless in the wake of the duel, panicked, and the commanders leading the wings, Kubaz and Anushjan, started retreating with their horsemen. Their Muslim cavalry counterparts didn't they chase the enemy them. horsemen, and instead enveloped the Sassanid center. Soon, the battle was over. We don't have a clear source on the number of casualties, but it is probably fair to assume that half of the Sassanid army was lost, while Khalid's casualties were less than a few thousand. Mm. Meanwhile, Shah Yazdegerd, who received Hormozd's letter in late March, decided to send an army under Karins to reinforce his governor. The speed at which it happened suggests that only the forces around the capital were gathered. According to the sources, Karins had somewhere between 15 and 25,000 men mm. when he moved south and crossed yeah, the Tigris. Know, they had a lot of, wow. they had a lot of... <laughs> He was apparently moving towards Ubala to help the governor, but after he crossed the small river named Makil, he encountered the rest of Hormozd's army, led by Kubaz and Anushjan, some 10,000 troops. Karins was told about the events of the Battle of the Chains. Simultaneously, a mobile force commanded by Muthana appeared nearby. 
probably sent by Khalid to chase the remainder of the Sassanid force and scout ahead right. while he was recruiting from the ranks of the Arab tribes in the area of Kazima and So he's Ufe. gathering more men. We don't know what Karins was thinking at this point, but it is clear that the Sassanids understood that they were not dealing with a minor raid and right. they faced a traditional Bedouin Arab army made up of light cavalry. Catching Mathana's mobile force in the open field would be impossible, since the Shah's army was considerably slower, so Karins didn't move to the strategically crucial Ubala to protect it, likely worried that Mathana would be able to attack his flank and rear. The Sassanid general decided to sacrifice Ubala and keep his position along the river in order to prevent Khalid from crossing the Tigris, and also from marching westwards to the most important city of the region, Alhira. In the meantime, Khalid was informed by Muthanna that a new army was moving to the south. The Sassanid position left him no other way to advance. Mm. Using the whole army to take Ubala might have entrapped him, so only a small group was sent to take it, while I mean, Khalid went on plans. and united with Muthanna. The battle that is now known as the Battle of the River took place in the third week of April. The Sassanids had anywhere from 25 to 50,000 troops, <laughs> oh, yeah. depending on the sources, while Khalid commanded around 18,000, nah, as he was able to reinforce his army he by recruiting from the local number, Arab bro. tribes. The sources for this battle are conflicted, so we will try to do our best to form a coherent narrative. Before the armies formed up in the morning, Khalid personally scouted the positions of Karinz's forces and was now sure that winning a set-piece battle was his only option yeah, to continue the campaign. He returned and the armies started to get into formation, both having a similar structure with infantry in the center and yeah, cavalry on the man wings. Asleep, sorry, the Sassanid army was deeper, as its commander made no attempts to widen his front and outflank the enemy probably relying on the superiority of his troops and the fact that his second rank would be fresh when the time came. The battle started with Karins calling for a duel. According mm. to the Sassanid sources, duels were a way for the commanders to prove to the yeah, troops yeah, yeah. that they were ready to fall for them, so a personal combat between champions was a usual sight. Okay. Khalid wanted to answer the call, but one of the duelists who was near him galloped towards the Sassanid commander and Khalid stayed back. In the ensuing duel, the Arab fighter was able to defeat his opponent. What? That demoralized the Sassanids, yeah. so Kabaz and Anushjan were probably forced to march forward and demand another duel to restore their morale. The Muslim wing commanders Asim and Adi galloped to them. Soon, the Sassanid commanders were dead, and Dang, bro, they got some good rulers on their team. <laughs> they got real trained, bro. The that the I don't know about how they mean until they commanders. stay outnumbered. Initially, this charge was fruitless, as the forces of the Caliphate failed to make any headway and were even pushed back. But this pushback made the Sassanid lines disorganized, as the units lost cohesion due to the lack of command. Khalid was able to exploit this and his counterattack created even more holes in the enemy formation. The rear He's of the Sassanid army general, attempted bro. to retreat while the front was they still gotta fighting. Beam, but don't break. However, yeah. left with no and support, was out, the front was soon massacred. Lightly equipped and fast Muslim troops were able to catch up to the fleeing Sassanids with ease, and the battle restarted along the river. The sources do not give a clear picture of what happened here, but most of the Sassanid losses occurred in that area, as some were killed, some drowned, and some were able to cross the river. By the end of the battle, the Shah's army lost anywhere from 15 Bro. to 30,000 troops, 30, while 15, Khalid's casualties were in the hundreds. Yeah, 18 is still. After the victory at the Battle of the River, <laughs> Khalid didn't cross into central Iraq. Yeah, guys, that was crazy. He's such a good general, yeah. bro, because... And he got Dula on his team, so that even... Like, he just... Like you, you said, can tell the no, man fight harder for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being no break. So, guys, uh, let us know how you enjoyed that video. Uh, uh, you want to see more videos like this, uh, hit, hit that. Like and if you're new to the uh, channel, please hit that like button, guys. Almost 300 subscribers, guys. Help us out a lot. Also, hit that like button. Hit that uh, notification. Comment yeah. Com yeah, below what videos you want us to react to. Let me see you guys in the next video.